Welcome to Theological Table Talk. This is the podcast of the Center for Christian Studies. My name is Keith Stanglin. I am the director of the Center for Christian Studies, and I'm joined here uh, by Todd Hall, who's the associate director of the Center for Christian Studies. Hi. Uh, so good to see you, Todd. And uh, what we want to do in this first podcast episode is simply introduce listeners to uh, the Center for Christian Studies and uh, what we do and uh, what we're all about. So I guess it's probably good to talk just about what CCS is and what we're trying to do and um, why people should be interested in it. Good, yeah. So Center for Christian Studies, CCS, um, we exist to make good resources, biblical theological resources and materials more easily available and accessible to people who need it. So church leaders, um, uh, Christians of any background um, who are looking to dig deeper. Uh, That's what we're about. We're a nonprofit ministry with 501c3 status. Um, And uh, yeah, are uh, basically here for churches. Yeah. Churches. Yeah. I think that's right. And I mean, it's... uh, you know, so the, I guess the, the immediate question is, do you think that churches need good biblical and theological resources these days? I mean, aren't they pretty well equipped? Things are going well and everyone, you know, biblical literacy is on the rise and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, certainly a high point for <laughs> uh, churches in Christianity in Western culture right now. No, um, <laughs> it's, these are challenging times. And so we need uh, resources we need organizations like this and, and, and supporters and people behind it who see the need for uh, help when it comes to biblical literacy, with, with, by which I just mean uh, basic knowledge of the Bible. I, mean, uh, I think in all churches and groups, denominations, we've seen that tanking, yeah. um, as it has in culture. Right. I mean, uh, the, the culture... Uh, certainly does not engage with Scripture, and you, you can't sort of assume a knowledge of the Bible yeah. um, in culture, and uh, even more in churches. Yeah, I mean, and and it's an assumption that our parents and grandparents could have made, I think. You know, I mean, it's not to say that people were more moral or, you know, understood the Bible and that sort of thing better, uh, although I suppose it's arguable that they were in their own yeah. way. Um but they at least were familiar with the Bible and sayings that come out of the King James Version, like skin of your teeth and that sort of thing. People could have told you where they came from, um, but not so much anymore. Yeah, I was watching a movie just a couple of days ago at a friend's house, and uh, this movie is called Captain's Courageous. It's from 1937. Um, it's based on a, a book by Rudyard Kipling. Okay. And the thing that stood out, one of the things that stood out to me just about the movie was the the amount of biblical literacy in the story mm. itself Interesting. embedded in, in the movie and that they just apparently assumed the audience had. Yeah. So 1937, that is a long time ago now, um, 85 years, I think, <laughs> wow. of, uh, yeah. this recording. but. Um, hmm. man, it was just, it was like, this is a different world and a different culture Yeah, you just don't see in popular culture anymore. And this is not a, a marginal movie. I mean, Spencer Tracy won the Academy Award for wow. best actor in that movie. It was up, I think for four nominations. So it's, it's mainstream Hollywood. 1937 and just, you I mean, you've got people singing Rock of Ages in the movie by heart, you know, out in public yeah. um, at a ceremony. It's <laughs> like, you don't even see that in churches today, yeah. Yeah. people singing hymns by heart, you know, spontaneously. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah. Just, well, and that's interesting. I didn't look this up ahead of time because I didn't know you were going to go there. But I didn't either. Very good. <laughs> that's the podcast. Uh, it is, man. Right. I love it. <laughs> Um, did you ever see Places in the Heart, Sally yes. Field? And it's like that whole yes. ending communion scene. Yeah. Uh, that, there's a theological sensitivity there that I think is, yeah, it's just gone. Uh, people don't get that. Yeah. Really. And that wasn't that More long ago. More recent movie. Yeah. 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 That was so, in color. That's right. Like the one I saw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I, 
Um, part of this, when you think about it, I've been uh, reflecting a bit on Ron Dreher's Benedict option. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know you've at least been able to peruse that some. Yeah, I've read the book. Yeah. Have you? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did, but it's it's been a while and I've read some since then, so it's not all there. But uh-huh. uh, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, CCS and things like what we're trying to do really fit in with what Dreher is kind of, I think, aiming at. I don't think he does a great job of clearly defining kind of what he's talking about, but uh, he sets a vision that I think is important for the church. Because what church leaders have to, I mean, we really have to ask ourselves, if we don't teach our younger generations the Bible and theology and things that matter, ethics, um, those kinds of things, who, where are they getting it? Who they because they are learning it, um, and and if they're getting it from Hollywood back in the day, they're getting it from Hollywood now. So I think that's yeah one of the things to think about. Yeah, uh, one of the things that does strike me about the yeah sometimes ill-defined maybe uh, Benedict option is that well this is what the church was supposed to be all along yeah. anyway. I mean you're talking about a community that's tight knit that has a firm identity, yeah. that knows what it believes and why it believes it, and lives it out. Right. I mean, if that's the Benedict option, then that's what the church has been called to be. It's just that it's needed, that, that reminder is needed since we have had the luxury, for, for better or worse, of kind of outsourcing some of that to yeah. the culture, that the culture is going to uh, remind us of the important things in the Bible and uh, the basics of ethical living and all that. Well, this is a reminder to the church that that was our job all along. Yeah. And uh, we have been, I think, by and large, neglecting that. And it's starting to come back and bite us now. It's yeah. very evident that we've been outsourcing that right. uh, to the culture and uh, this is a good chance, as you say, for uh, us, Center for Christian Studies, and for others uh, like us to s- step in and be a resource, yeah. I think, among others, be part of the solution right. uh, that we need more and more of. So. Yeah, and I, I, so in some of the work I've done on seminary education, I think what you really see in Protestant seminaries is this kind of dependency on the church for basic biblical literacy, um, theological and moral formation, so that when people go to seminary, they've already got that foundation. And seminaries are having to change the way they do things because that's just not the case anymore because people aren't getting it in churches uh, the way that they presumably once were. Um, And so I think that, uh, you know, when I think about the way that CCS fits into the church's life. The seminary fills one place in the church's life, and it's an an extremely important place. I think seminaries need a lot of reform, too. And I think, uh, you know, having been in the seminary, we know that uh, there's work that needs to be done in the seminary in terms of orthodoxy and sort of uh, figuring out what that theological orthodoxy looks like in the 21st century. But... Uh, it's it's an incredibly important uh, institution for the church, and CCS is not a seminary. Right. Uh, we sort of are trying to bridge that gap, right, between what goes on in seminary, which is professional ministry training, right, and we're trying to help quality, faithful scholarship from the seminary. We want to serve as something of a conduit to get that into churches to try and help your average church member better understand the way they live the faith, better understand the faith, better better than live the faith, and better than pass it on. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think that's right. And and I like that you made that distinction between seminaries and what we do at CCS. If someone comes to me and says, um, you know, I want to go into full-time ministry, and I want to devote time and resources to preparing for that. Uh, that's great. And I tell them, 
go to seminary. Yeah. And there are a couple that I can recommend. I, I teach at a couple of different places. Um, and I, I love to see that happening. And I have certainly a foot in the door in that. Uh, you and I have taught and, and trained people for professional ministry for a long time. Um, so the church needs more of that also. Yeah. Um, but then kind of thinking about our specific audience is, well, what about all of the people who are active in churches, quote unquote, lay members um, mm -hmm. and leaders in churches who don't have the formal training, who uh, never went to seminary, uh, maybe never even went to a Christian college yeah. and, and took courses in theology and scripture. Um, they uh, want to dig deeper and they need to if they're going to be any kind of you know leaders in their churches, uh, Bible class teachers, um, and so forth. So, what do we do for them? Yeah, they're not going to go take a master's degree right. at a seminary. Um, they have a family. They have a full time job doing something else. Um, what do we do for them? Where do we direct them? Yeah. What kind of resources is the church providing? Uh, some churches maybe are providing those things, uh, and that's great. But in, in my experience, churches, especially the smaller churches, which is the majority of churches, right. um, yeah. particularly in churches of Christ where we come from, um, aren't providing that and aren't able to provide those yeah. resources. And so that's a very large niche and audience there of, of people. When we talk about people who don't have formal theological training, but our volunteers are wanting to help out in churches. That's, man, that's the majority of yeah. church members, I think. I think and so. so that's our audience, yeah. really, is uh, people who are in need of reliable resources. Yeah. I think, too, that uh, you know, people in leadership in churches uh, often underestimate the interest that uh, someone in the pews has in going deeper. Um, are there people who come and sit in the pews and go home and, and for them that's enough? Sure. And that's, you know, that's, I'm not talking down about that, but I'm just from my own kind of experience, I think you find that if you offer quality stuff, interesting stuff that, uh, helps open vistas to the Bible or especially to God, uh, the interest is huge. And I think that church leaders, Part of what we want to do, I think, is to appeal to church leaders to recognize uh, that desire, to stir that desire, uh, to invest in that desire, right? To to help find ways to equip people in their churches to uh, to better understand what it is that they believe. I, I think that's there, and I think I I would just encourage church leaders. I mean, I've seen it in my own ministry. Uh, where I minister, and I've seen it in a lot of others. Just people are interested, they're hungry, they want something more um, than just sort of surface level understanding. Most people are really interested, especially when you talk about things that CCS has done. I mean, we'll come back to this, but our Journal for Christian Studies, mm -hmm. uh, Volume 1, Issue 2, took on the topic that no one's talking about. And that is uh, human sexuality. And, you know, people want to know and understand why it is that traditional Christians believe what they believe about these things. And there's no one out there talking about it. Um, because for whatever reason, cultural forces and fear and, you know, all that different kind of stuff. But I'll just say people talk about it, but not in helpful ways or biblical right. ways. Usually, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they do. Yes. Yeah, there's, they, they can't find someone... Uh, reasonably talking from uh, sort of an orthodox, little o, traditional perspective on these issues. And it's not just that. I mean, that one, you know, obviously that's a very important topic, and we probably been published it, what, four years too late. Um, it would have been great uh, earlier on. But hey, we tried, but that's a different story. It is, yes. <laughs> but somehow we got, you know, the wave, those kinds of cultural waves are moving so quickly um, that you have to be pretty nimble to stay in front of them like, like CCS is. And I think that's, that's important. Yes. So yeah, the audience is, it's people that they want, they're asking those questions. They're hungry for those questions. 
uh, to be answered. They, they need the information, and CCS wants to be there to help leaders give that to, to their people. Yeah, and I'll add that uh, CCS is also for ministers. So uh, we talk about the people uh, who don't have formal theological training. Uh, we're also for those who have been to seminary or to uh, school. They have biblical training. They've been in ministry uh, maybe for a long time. Well, we offer resources for them as well. It's not just one or the other. This is for anybody who wants to dig deeper. Yeah. And so uh, some things that we we have are maybe more for the beginners. Others I would just call for uh, minister enrichment. Yeah. Uh, so the journal definitely fits in there. And then some of the video series we have um, instruction. So it's all kinds of things. Uh, yeah, I think that will appeal to different Christians who are at different stages in their uh, learning. Yeah, yeah, and I don't. I want to say as a minister, you know, as a someone who preaches, uh, Sundays come every week, and right. after a few years, it's awfully nice to have uh, resources. I would consider it continuing education, sort of that. Yeah. It's awfully nice to have someone to help you think through something, maybe find another sermon series or class to teach, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we want to do that too. We want to provide this kind of continuing ed uh, to them, to those folks. Yeah, I would say then our goal is, yeah, to make those resources available, but really just looking long term to help those who use our resources to help boost, let's say, the biblical literacy up a notch or two, you know, yeah. and the theological understanding and the uh, right living to, uh, if we can, pull people up on that uh, on that scale a uh, couple of notches and just be a reliable resource for information about scripture and doctrine. Yeah, yeah, I think that's important. So, as we said, we're not a seminary. But I like to think that if you've been through our material, you'd do a lot better in seminary if you decided you wanted to go. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> exactly. Well, and in that sense, we could be a stepping stone to people that yeah. decide, I really love this stuff. I'd love, right. to, uh, I'd love to learn more about it and, and go take a master's degree somewhere. Um, yeah, and you know, I think that's really, I hadn't thought about that until just now, but that's really important. You know, I can remember when I was a kid, uh, probably 12 years old, maybe 13, and I was at church one Sunday, and the preacher there, W.T. Hamilton, uh, I'll never forget, he was a, an elder statesman, um, but he came and took me aside, and he said, have you ever thought about going into ministry? Mm -hmm. And I can honestly say that, uh, no, I'd never thought mm -hmm. about going into ministry. Um, and I think that, uh, I think church leaders need to start doing that again. Um, mm -hmm. Because I I haven't seen that in a long time where um, you know current church leaders are really thinking about the next generation of church leaders. It's easy to get caught up in those day to day, week to week, even year to year kind of things that churches have to deal with over and over and over again. But um, you have to have this vision of preparing people for the next generation of church leadership. And, you know, that's something that we want to come alongside. We want to help with, um, if, if we can't do it and there will always be things that, that Keith and I are not personally equipped to do, we will connect churches with the resources that do it through CCS that, um, that will provide the kind of training and education they're looking for. And so I think you'll see that when we, in a, in a few, when we talk about uh, video courses and things that we're working on. Um, we really want to be able to address kind of a diverse amount of information for people that they can they can use for their churches or whatever else. Yeah, um, another way of stating our goal then is, I would say, in the words of Second Timothy two two, I really love that that passage where Paul talks about entru entrusting this gospel to others. So he says, Timothy, the things that you know you learn from me. Um, in trust to other men who can then pass it on to others. I'm paraphrasing there, yeah, but yeah. it's just you've got Paul here at the end of his life taking the long view of 
the gospel that, hey, it looks like we're going to be here for a while. Right. And so yeah. uh, we uh, need to make plans for the future. And so you see four links in that chain there, just in that short little verse where it's you've got Paul, who's passed on the faith to his son in the faith, Timothy. Mm-hmm. He, and his instruction to him is to entrust this gospel to others who can, and that's, there's the third link, who can then teach others, the fourth link. Yeah. So um, it is about passing on the faith to others, and that includes, and may, maybe most importantly, the next generation. And I'm not sure the church has been doing a great job at that. So we've all seen and heard the statistics about the number of young people who are leaving the church, how yeah. the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, is the largest uh, quote-unquote religious group, um, uh, fastest-growing religious group in, in the global West and the United States. Yeah, closely followed by former ministers, by the way. <sighs> yeah, I'm afraid so. So for all of these reasons, yeah, uh, we need resources that can help train teachers of teachers, yeah, um, and yeah. who can help pass on the faith in um, a way that is uh, effective. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and interesting. You know, yeah. that's that's the thing. Um, yeah, we're trying to engage interesting texts, interesting topics, that kind of thing, as well as just good, solid Bible study. And I think you know you can't under, you can't overstate how interested people would get into. Studying the Bible, were it taught well, were you know, uh, were it interesting? So yes. that's part of what we want to do too. So why this podcast then? That's what CCS is about. This podcast is uh, an activity that we're yeah. uh, starting now, uh, among many other things we've been doing for over a year. Um, what's this podcast going to do? Yeah, yeah, I've been asking myself that since I hit record. <laughs> yes, okay, <laughs> excellent. Um, so I will say it's the, the podcast, I'll just say this, is not going to be talking about what CCS does all the time. Right, this is, yeah. I think, a necessary part of the introduction as to who right. we are and what this uh, is, the larger ministry that this is a part of. But how does this differ you know, from the other things we're doing? Yeah. Um, in, but also kind of, I guess, meet that goal as well. Well, part of it is the media is just different, right? So uh, with video courses, you've got one thing, and, and with the other things we did, something else. And this is a conversation. So It's not um, a journal article. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I promise not to have 30 citations in any particular <laughs> podcast. Um, no, I think that uh, you know, podcasting is an interesting format right now, and people are interested in it. It's another way for, you know, I have uh, friends who listen to podcasts. It's all they do, uh, you know, while they're driving or whatever else. They don't listen to music. They listen to podcasts. And it's because I think there is this ferment of interest out there, um, and the media allows for, and, and believe it or not, I think that your average podcast uh, doesn't have the same kind of pitfalls as like uh, video media because you know like if you're watching a television show you know you, Neil Postman used to talk about watching the news you know and they mm-hmm. go from one thing to and now this right, right. And it's like <laughs> this really truncated view of the world right yes. um, and then the next is a commercial for you know uh, ring around the collar stuff or something you know uh, whereas a podcast you have a fairly lengthy amount of time to really kind of explore a topic and uh, you know, it's not a, an incredible commitment. So you can talk with really inter- interesting people. Um, so we're hoping to have some interesting guests on, mm-hmm. on the show later um, and, uh, and, and discuss things that are really important and really interesting in a way that doesn't truncate that discussion and make it sort of bumper stickery. Right. Yeah. So the video uh, series that we do, have a wide range of depth uh, to them, but yeah, they are, I would say, a little more polished in the format and also uh, briefer when it comes to sort of surveying uh, uh, topics, but it's not a journal article either, which is uh, very detailed, but uh, tends to be something you want to sit down and 
chew on a little more carefully. This is something that you can take in, as you say, while you're fighting traffic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then hopefully make the, make the traffic, traffic better. a little better. <laughs> yes. Um, it's hard to you yeah. know yell at someone maybe and, and flip them off while they're listening. Right. While you're listening to good, uh, good you know, winsome theology. theology like this, right? So. Well, and I think that's the other thing is uh, you know what the tr- if we're being honest, just very truthful. I am a very funny person. Oh, and, yeah, <laughs> and that doesn't come out that, in the videos yeah, that was at good. all. That was a funny one. <laughs> So, yeah, it's a different, I, I, and I'm looking forward to it in a lot of ways. I'm nervous about it, as you know. Um, I'm not a technology guy. Uh, but uh, I'm really interested in some of the things we're going to talk about and yes. really, really interested in talking to some people about the things we're going to talk about, uh, future guests and that sort of thing. Yeah, so it's a freer form than some of the other media that we have uh, with CCS. The, the, the topics, I will say, also will be broader. So it's uh, Christian Studies, Center for Christian Studies, we also mean as a broad kind of category because um, there are sort of specifically Christian studies like scripture, theology, but anything we talk about in the world should be kind of brought under the umbrella of and through the lens of a Christian worldview. And yeah. so that, in a sense, is also Christian studies, and that's kind of what we mean to do. So there's that more informal aspect to it, but just an, an opportunity to talk about other things that we're probably not going to write a journal article right. about or do a video series on. Yeah. But... I will say also that it's going to be some topics that will, you've mentioned some interviews we're going to have. I think we're going to study through some biblical books. I think we're also going to address some topics that probably are addressed in our videos or mm-hmm. in some of the journal articles, but then be able to uh, communicate them through this medium that is different from the others, though there will be some overlap and maybe dovetail with some of those other things and just connect yeah. in, in a good way. We don't plan on having callers, though. Oh, sorry. I'm dating myself. That would be the old radio show. No call. I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll play it by ear. But uh, probably not. I can hold my phone up to the, yeah, to that's the microphone that's here right. and see what happens. <laughs> Good. Um, well, I, let's see. What's coming down the pipe for us? What are, we, what are we doing in the future that I think is important to think through? Uh, so besides the sort of broad topics we just um, outlined, I mean, like I say, biblical books, I think, are definitely coming down the pike. Um, I would like to do some things that are um, historical. I think this is uh, maybe a good I'm shocked. format. I know. The church know. historian wants to do historical. Yeah, yeah. I love <laughs> history. And so we definitely need to have some good uh, stories from history that will... Um, resonate with us and I think that the audience just needs to hear and that we need to learn lessons from. No, there are a lot of great stuff. I mean, I was, my uh, church history teacher, who's old enough, I know he won't ever listen to this podcast so I could talk about him, (laughs) uh, did not like church history. So (laughs) it was the worst class that I had. Uh, And so like, you know, I never got to learn about uh, St. Nick punching Arius in the face until much later. Uh, and uh, that's uh, largely due to, to Keith. Thank you very much. One of the favorite stories has greatly uh, improved my Christmases in church history. Yes, <laughs> uh, one of yeah, one of my favorites in teaching that. Yeah, that's right. I think you're not the only one who has had, if they had any exposure to church history, it was often like um, how the church failed, right? You know, yeah, or what yeah. not to do um, <laughs> as a church. So we'll want to. That's an important aspect sure. of history, yeah. but we'll want to go beyond that and see what uh, positive things we can learn from it. <laughs> there will be doctrinal things that we talk about as well. So I can think of you know just a number of uh, doctrines, sort of uh, theology, um, that I think we don't get a chance to explore maybe in a lot of church settings. Um, and then I think we'll hit maybe some social and cultural topics as well. Yeah. Um, along the way that, uh, that that need to be discussed. Yeah. I'll be absent on the controversial ones. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's I'll, <laughs> I'll uh, take those myself. And, uh, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, thanks sure. 
No, I think uh, there are also, there, that's the cool thing about the podcast, I think, is that it opens up realms of possibility that we, we wouldn't otherwise have to talk about. So I'd love to do something uh, on what uh, music and theology. Uh, be mm -hmm. interesting to, to sort of exegete some contemporary songs uh, and some older songs and kind of look at, you know, the theology, as it were, behind them. I mean, there is, everything is theology, right? Because everything's about yeah. God, whether you believe in him or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. We can do the same with movies. Yeah. We've already yeah. gotten a little taste of that, um, just off the cuff here um, in this one. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Next, we'll talk about names. It's hard to come up with a good name and so i yeah. thought about a few but i'm not sure if i like them right yeah and and the good ones tend to be taken as the problem you know people have been doing podcasts for a while we're a little late us. to the uh, yeah a little late to the party all the good ones were taken yeah so like uh we thought about renewal yeah as uh i mean that's part of what we're about here with center for christian studies is in view of the loss of biblical and theological literacy in churches, we want to be at least part of the renewal uh, movement that we uh, pray for and hope for in the church. Yeah. But that's pretty generic and, right. I don't know, probably not a good for a title here. Yeah, yeah. I th even think restoration might work, you know, something along those lines. But uh, Those ideas are part of this, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and we had talked about equip because that's part of what we do. Yeah, um, and all these are very serious, by the way. That's yeah, that's, doesn't always fit my personality, but uh, right. Um, theological musings. Yeah, I don't know if that one was taken or not, but it's kind of what we're doing. But yeah, it's, didn't, yeah, it wasn't really catchy. Right. Yeah. None of these something, are that catchy. It doesn't catchy. really roll off the tongue. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, we we did have a few others. These actually, the two uh, that, that we talked about next, these were my prime candidates. I really thought for a while that we should do these. Are these the ones from the King James version? Yes. Uh, we yeah. So we really loved the King James version uh, for many reasons. Uh, it's it's in. Um, you know, antiquity, uh, but it's it's, it's old uh, for an English translation. But it's also very beautiful in places. Also, it can be kind of funny. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we had a couple of moments when we were reading through the King James in middle school that were laugh out loud moments. Yeah. Yes. We won't mention all of those here <laughs> no. in polite company, but I guess in the early 17th century, it was okay to say things. <laughs> <laughs> We won't say it on our first episode. That's Maybe right. later on when we uh, build a little rapport with our audience, we can That's right. uh, <laughs> use those terms here. But anyway, yeah, one of my favorites is from uh, James one twenty one, when uh, it warns against a superfluity of naughtiness. Yes. Um, <laughs> I thought that could be a fun podcast name, a superfluity of naughtiness. I had some South African uh, friends who we went to a church that used the King James often, and uh, we laughed at that phrase, but then uh, she would say, superfluity of naughtiness. <laughs> Which and makes so, it even better. Yeah, actually. and so we uh, enjoyed that phrase for a while. And I'm afraid that would build expectations, though, for the podcast of doing something naughty right. every time. And, and not just a little naughty. Yes. The superfluity of naughty. Yes, an abundance, <laughs> overflowing of naughtiness. Right, I'm so, good for a little naughty. Yeah, and you know, we will have uh, topics that are, um, that are fun sometimes and are a little informal, but not necessarily naughty every time. Yeah. So we skipped, uh, passed on that one. Yeah, the other one that I uh, was really interested in is the old King James of Acts 17. Verse 5, where um, people opposed to Paul gathered together lewd fellows of the baser sort. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought lewd fellows of the baser sort would be just about perfect uh, for our podcast, except 
I'm not sure that lewd meant then what it means now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. Yeah, that could be fun. Lewd, I think, yeah, I mean something like wicked or bad fellows, but <laughs> lewd fellows of the baser sort. Uh, also, probably, though fun, could um, convey things that we don't quite want yeah. uh, connoted about this uh, podcast. So, we also passed on that one. Um, I remember also just uh, talking about uh, Undecided. <laughs> because we are undecided about a name for the podcast, uh, we uh, thought, Undecided, that could be good. Uh, and then we looked that up. And that had been taken already. So, uh, <laughs> um, so what did we end up with here? Well, it's kind of fitting because uh, one of the things that that we do for in person gathering and instruction and teaching is uh, a series of things that Keith hosts and his wife Amanda uh, called table talks or theological table talks. And uh, they gather and discuss important uh, theological topics, and we found that to be a very good thing. It's intimate, uh, more intimate than other things that we do, like seminars, you're able to really explore uh, those. And so ultimately, I think we've decided on theological table talk um, as kind of an extension of what we do. Yeah, theological table talk. I've always liked uh, table talk. When I I used to teach at Harding, uh, we had uh, basically a a faculty colloquy um, once a week, and I called that theological table talk. And what it's just like it sounds. So it is uh, a table. It's an extension of the table. There it was at lunchtime. And this is just a, a long Christian tradition that goes back to Jesus himself, who did a lot of his hospitality and welcoming and teaching um, around a table. Um, In fact, he had uh, tax collectors and sinners with him at the table, which was one of the things he was uh, very much hated for. I don't know that we have, particularly on our guest list, tax collectors or sinners, though uh, (laughs) they would be welcome to join us. But um, we see that throughout uh, church history. Also, Martin Luther was famous for his table talk. Oh. I don't know if you've ever read the table talk. Yeah, it's a. So what uh, Luther would do was yes, have uh, people over to his house, which was a very large house. It was a former monastery um, in Wittenberg, and they would come and have a meal together and sit around and drink beer and talk about whatever it was, uh, often theology, but often other things as well. And so huh. Luther, people would ask questions, and he would hold forth on whatever the topic was. Of Again, he theology, yeah, <laughs> theology, scripture, but also the happenings of the day, things they were hearing about um, going on in society. And huh. you would have people transcribing the conversations. Wow. So um, he would he would talk. Somebody would be there uh, transcribing these, and these were uh, put into the um, Weimar edition of Luther's works. And some of the best excerpts were translated into one of the volumes of the American edition of Luther's works. Wow. So um, if you want to just see, yeah, what it was like to. Yeah. Kind of sit and chat with Luther and his buddies about things. Did they clean up the language? That's the no, no, <laughs> they did not. Uh, that I recall, anyway. So, yeah, that. So Luther was podcasting before podcasting was cool. He was. He was the original podcaster, and you see this throughout history. I know Thomas Jefferson was also famous for having people over to his house to share at his table and talk about. Uh, religious and political matters of the day, have intelligent conversations, but to do so around food. So we are literally sitting at a table here as we have this conversation. We will be inviting people to this table um, and you know, sharing a coffee um, or whatever we have here uh, to drink. Probably you won't hear us eating on this. I think that would be bad form, but you're welcome as a listener to uh, eat or do whatever uh, while you're listening to this. But it's theological. Again, all of our topics are not necessarily going to be overtly theological. I think most of them will be, 
Uh, some of them won't be, but it's always through a Christian lens yeah. as we think about and, and talk about these topics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, theology was the queen of the sciences, right? Not because it was a quote-unquote science like we think of it today, but because it was the guiding, sort of overriding principle. So anything you talk about is theology, in a sense. And so, Yeah, and most important, um, I... Uh, didn't see theological table talk as something that had been used for a podcast <laughs> title. All right, in in the searches uh, that we've made, there were things close to it, things about tables and talking and even theology, but uh, those three together, I don't think so. So we're going to put a little uh, trademark on that. Yeah, <laughs> or however that works. We'll talk to our tech people. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we invite you uh, listeners to check out our website at christian-studies.org and also uh, to suggest topics. Uh, We have many in mind, but we would like to hear your ideas about topics and perhaps even guests that we should have on Theological Table Talk. We also invite you to uh, give to the Center for Christian Studies, um, and that will help support not only the podcast, but other activities that we engage in for the sake of the church. So thanks for joining Todd and me at the table for Theological Table Talk. Until next time.